What's good, everybody, and welcome to Body Bag Podcast. I'm Chris Thomas, and with me, as always, Broke Rider Dave. How we doing, everybody? And, uh, well, this is awkward. This would have been the uh, awesome, awesome review of the autopsy of Jane Doe, but somebody, I'm not going to say names or point any fingers, it doesn't, it's not important, but somebody lost the uh, entire episode of the season six premiere and now we have to recapture that lightning in a bottle. That was that, was that episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but you know what things happen? You know, I'll just, yeah. uh, yes, this is my season, my special season where I have creative control. But, you know, you, you just take your lumps and you move on. Yeah. So instead, we're going to, we're, we're keeping, I had a theme this season. It was going to be season of the witch where we're going to have a month of witch talk. Long story short, we liked Autopsy of Jane Doe, right? Yeah, it was a good movie. Yeah, just a brief, just a brief thing. We liked it. It was our, it was in our, it got at least to twenty two, twenty three from us. Yeah. So maybe we'll re-review it sometime down the line. But we we were left with a conundrum: Do we try to just pretend like we never saw it and do this review, or do we just do a whole new, a whole different movie? So we went with the latter. Welcome yeah. to the episode, uh, season six premiere of the Vivitch or the Witch. I always call it the Vivitch. Yeah, I always call it the witch. But what we I are going—why they do that? Yeah, I don't know. I I call it the Vavitch. But what we are going to try to capture the light that there is a little bit of an upside to doing this, though, because we did have homework. Yeah, and it's all kind of worth it because I'm going to go ahead and spoil it just to hear Dave recap all about evil. Uh, spoiler alert: He hated it. <laughs> but 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 let's let's listen to Dave's. Uh, account of his homework of All About Evil, the movie that I recommended for him because apparently I don't want him to watch good movies. Yeah. So, I mean, I see that a lot of people enjoy this movie. Right. It's just not a movie I got a lot of enjoyment out of. Because you were pretty intense about it, but now that some time has passed a little bit. I think it was just like uh, the main actress, just her acting took me out of it. I forgot. Oh, oh no, never mind. I was trying to remember where I saw her from. I probably yeah. mentioned it in passing when we were watching it. She's from like Dennis the Menace was the, probably the only thing I've ever seen her from from nine, uh, from the 90s. She was the babysitter from from She was in Orange is the New Black. And, yeah. I never watched it. I but, watched a couple episodes, yeah. But now that a little time has passed uh, and and you've calmed down a little bit, is is, is your upsetness dampened a little? Yeah, I'm not upset about it. I'm just like it's a movie I'm not going to go back and watch. I just like, I understand that the acting is supposed to be over the top, but she just kind of went too much. much with, yeah, it was just like, I can understand that. You know, that's one of the things, again, one of the reasons why, you know, being a movie critic means very little in the grand scheme of things, because yeah. it's just us giving our opinions about things. Because yeah. that movie, you, I could watch it today. And probably feel exactly how you do, but it just happened to catch me on a day where I was feeling lighthearted and goofy. Yeah. So I watched it, and I was like, "Oh, this is pretty fun. I'm having fun with it." So it's yeah, it's it's just funny how being a critic works and how your judgments change and stuff like that. Because I haven't seen it since then. I might hate it, but why don't you tell us briefly what it's about? Okay, so uh, Natasha, she plays a character. I think her name was Deborah, and she basically inherits this uh. Kind of like a dying movie theater from her father. Right. And her stepmother was trying to get her to sell it. And Deborah, that was kind of like her breaking point. She snaps. Right. And just starts stabbing the fuck out of her. Yep. But what she doesn't know is she, somehow she was getting recorded and it got played on the main projector in the theater. You're like, this is and some good shit. <laughs> everybody loved it thinking it was just a movie. This is an independent indie horror film. Not knowing it was an actual stuff film. I'm, I got to be honest with you as well. Um, I don't know if I had mentioned it in our original recording, but one of the reasons why I gave you this one was I had popcorn on my mind, and that was the only other movie yeah. I knew where it took place in a movie theater. So yeah. that was one of the reasons I gave it to you, because I was like, well, we talk about popcorn and having potential, so the only other one I could think of was this movie. Yeah. And then also our protagonist is like a 17 year old boy and he's in love with Deborah, who's she's like 35 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, very, very statutory agey. <laughs> yeah. I forgot was, about that bit. That, again, it's been so long. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's 
So he's constantly going to the theaters, talking her up, watching as she's killing people, recruiting people to help her kill people. Yeah, she he he's doting on her. And very this movie was made in like 2014, but they went into like this 90s 80s cliche where if you're mm-hmm. a fan of horror, you're an awful person. Yeah. Oh, is because, that? Oh, like oh, horror people are like oh, those people are like weird because they like like horror movies kind of thing. Yeah, because one of the girls he took a girl to the theater and she ended up getting murdered there, and so she's missing, and everyone's like, oh, he took her to a horror movie, so he must be the killer. I mean, they weren't too far off, I mean, <laughs> but but uh, it's 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 yeah. um, I was like, no, it's really dumb. funny for those who don't. Like, I'm sure that there's probably some people who listen to this that aren't like diehard horror fans, but it's funny. We've interacted with enough horror people to know that they're actually the biggest sweethearts, which is which is why that's really funny. (laughs) It's like, oh, he must be the killer. He took her to a horror movie. There's something wrong with him. Yeah, I'm just saying that trope hasn't been used since like the 80s or 90s. And I feel like society's kind of moved on from it. Right. So they kind of brought back and like, just why? That makes no sense. Mm hmm. Yeah. It does have that. Does, I don't know if it's the filter that they use, but this movie does have like a a '90s TV show feel. Yeah, like it feels like I'm watching an episode of Tales from the Crypt kind of feel. Like like that kind of. It's hard to explain, but it's as you're watching it, you you get that feeling of this feels like it's reminiscent of like the '90s. Yeah, but yeah, and then ultimately he finds out that Deborah's actually killing people. He tries to save them. Some people end up dying, and then his mom ends up being the one to kill and take out Deborah. But damn it, if it didn't look good on screen. Yeah. So that is all about evil, a movie I watched about two months ago. <laughs> and that you, that you're, I'm sure you're not having that. You're you're not happy that you have to recap it again. <laughs> yeah. Can I talk about this movie again? Yeah. And unless I uh, accidentally delete the footage again, and then we have to talk about it for a third time. Um. So yeah, I I wish that I could actually like talk about it a little bit more just because it's been a long time. I gave that to you just having good thoughts about it and forgetting yeah. most of it, but so was there anything that you liked about it? Anything that stood out? I forgot. I, I mean, it's like shot for confidently well for the kind of movie it is. Yeah. I don't know why like yeah. I said, for what it was and like I said for it having that kind of feel of something that you would see from the 90s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think at the beginning too, they're like constantly like throwing homages to like like older movies too. Like if I'm not mistaken, the beginning is like old B movie posters yeah. from like uh, you know stuff that you would see on MST3K or whatever. Oh yeah. well, um, you got an overall score for it though. You got a uh, break it down technical story. Uh, technicals, I think I gave it a seven, mm-hmm. and then enjoyment, I gave it. Uh, it was pretty low. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Uh, yeah, three or four or something. Yeah, I think uh, story I gave it a five, and then enjoyment I gave it a four. Uh huh. So I would bring it to sixteen out of thirty. Yeah, so it's still kind of above average. Yeah. Um, but just not something you're gonna go see again. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I'd say it's if you're gonna go watch this movie, it's don't take it seriously. It's not a yeah. serious movie at all. So it's it's. It's goofy. It's weird goofy. It's acted goofily. So so just go into it knowing that. Now me on the other hand, I was excited because I get to talk about Hell House. <laughs> and and apparently like since then, <laughs> since my first viewing and me going through Insta, Hell House has get has been getting a lot of traction lately as people a lot of people have been talking about it. Yeah. Uh, or maybe I'm just now noticing because I've watched it. So a brief brief overview of Hell House because I'll just go into basically haunted house. A group of uh, it's a group of friends from up north. I think they're from uh, this all takes they're place in New uh, York, New York, isn't it? Yeah, they're from like uh, the New York City area, and they end up going like upstate New York. Florida. Yeah, they go out to the more country side of New York. Yeah, uh, which when I went back and re- realized that I was like, oh, they're actually in New York. I, I forget New York has countryside. Yeah, um, New York City is just a small part of the actual state of New York. Yeah. <laughs> Group uh, leaves New York City, goes out to this Abaddon Hotel, this long since abandoned hotel that has a dark history to it that not the entire group knows about, but their ringleader, Alex, knows about it. But he knows something about it. But as far as they know, it's just an abandoned house. And they yeah. want to set up a haunted house in this place. Yeah, because that's kind of like their company. They go around different areas setting up 
They're like pop ups. Yeah, pop up haunted houses each year. Yeah, so and they they probably they make a decent living out of it, and they've been doing this for years. They keep the same group, and they then hire on like temps to play like the walkthrough clowns or the walkthrough all the people. actors and everything for the haunted house. Yeah, yeah, victims and whatnot. So this is a mockumentary found footage movie, which I like. I love yeah. found footage movies, and it's a combination of the found footage as well as eyewitnesses' account of the things that. Happened on this mysterious day, the grand opening of this Abaddon Hotel haunted walkthrough. And at the end of the night, it was left with uh, like multiple murders and dozens injured. Yeah. So all of this is recounting the events that led up to this night. Yeah. Um, so, uh, they're, so most of this movie is them setting up this hotel and shit starts getting weird. Nothing big with these kind of movies. It, it's really funny that with movies like this, the ghosts don't rev up and just go all out initially they have to warm up initially they get, they don't just go right for it no they have to they, they take to, their sweet time they got to get their rocks off there they enjoy yeah. this so this place is uh we find out we find out from one of the locals that this place has a bad history of like a cult leader being there and killing a bunch of people killing himself and weird culty stuff going on um but it's that was like 20 years ago yeah by a guy named andrew tully uh, so they're getting the place set up, setting up creepy mannequins, clown mannequins, uh, which will end up becoming a staple of the series. Yeah. Main guy, main guy. I think his name is Paul is the main, is the camera guy. Is that right? Uh, I want to say the main camera guy initially is a guy named Paul, but you might have to fact check me on that as I'm talking about it. I, I don't, Alex is the uh, like leader of the group, I believe. He's the ringleader, but the first camera guy who's doing the, uh, who, who was documenting everything at first. Who's kind of annoying? Who's kind of like the that? Fr- you have this friend. Uh, he's the pervert of the of the he group. He takes nothing seriously. Takes nothing seriously. He had a history of like bailing once or twice on some of the gigs, and he's like hitting on the female actresses. He's that kind of guy. He's like the goofy assholey kind of guy, but he's their goofy assholey guy. Yeah, we every friend group has him. So he's recording everything, and shit starts getting weird. Uh, they do walkthroughs and like there's extra mannequins that are popping up out of nowhere. He, uh, one night he wakes up in the middle of the night and he sees somebody who he thinks is, uh, one of the female friends just lurking in the corner. Yeah. Uh, so little stuff like that it happens over the course of like two, three days to the point where this guy's like, all right, fuck this place. Like uh, he's seeing clown mannequins move when they shouldn't. There's extra stuff popping up and, and it's that classic thing of, when somebody sees something, they're like, "Haha, nice prank, guys." Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, "I'm not, I'm not doing this. It's, it's not a joke." Yeah, good one, guy. Which I hate that, tro- like that trope. That's one trope I hate in movies where it's like, "Oh, they don't believe you, obviously." So, but yeah, Paul is the main camera guy. Okay, so I was right on that. So Paul, played by Gore Abrams. Gore Abrams. I had no idea who he is, but that's a dope ass name. Oh, I oh I I pronounced his name Gore Abrams like yeah y'all know who Gore Abrams is because I didn't know who Gore Abrams was, <laughs> I was like yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah y'all know Gore really Abrams dope. right it just has a really awesome name yeah for a horror movie hell yeah so gets to the point this uh, camera guy Paul is like fuck the you know fuck you know fuck the I like he he wants to leave one night though wakes up creepy uh, was it was it one of his friends or was it a, a apparition of some woman in a, f- a woman apparition yeah a woman first, appar- he thinks it's sarah's like sarah and then he sees it's not sarah's one of the friends in yeah. the corner and it comes after him and he's comatose now yeah he's comatose or he's 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 nowhere to be found they wake up yeah, the next he morning he's, yeah. he's nowhere to be found more shit happens more clown stuff moves around um they think oh he's gone because he pushed out and left yeah um next morning or next night they're awoken by the sound of a piano playing go down go downstairs they think it's paul fucking with them it's not no he's nowhere to be found they keep uh, there's more you know you can only see the clown yeah. mannequins move their heads so many times before you go fuck this <laughs> like because yeah. this has happened like three times so far where they see these mannequins can't move their heads are stationary but somehow their necks keep moving yeah which is impossible, yet they still stick around. <laughs> so uh, they eventually find Paul. He's comatose on the ground. Yeah, they find Paul the uh, morning of the opening. He's just out of it. 
he's out of it. And now another guy is like, yo, fuck this. <laughs> like, like, I'm out of here. Yeah, I think it was Mike. Taylor, Tony, or Mac. Or Mac. He's like, yeah, I think it was Tony. I think Tony was like, yeah, I'm out of here. And, and, yeah. he's, and he's leaving. Mac or Tony, like, chases back. He's like, no, you can't leave. You can't leave. You don't understand. Like, <laughs> and, and camera cuts off and camera cuts back. By the way, this is all. This movie is not also without that cliche of them going, "Get that camera out of my face," or "You can yeah. stop recording." They give you. They have to stop the movie sometimes to be like, "This is why we're recording everything." Yeah. So at this point, cuts off, and he's sitting out there in the wood, uh, out in, the, in the middle of a field, going, "We can't leave." So we basically are. The crew cannot leave for some reason, and. They they don't know why or, or well they know why we don't know as the audience why they can't leave. Yeah, the only one in the crew that really knows why they can't leave at the moment is Alex. Alex and his one of his friends, and I think uh, Mac, who is kind of like the second in second command. in command. Yeah. yeah. So long story short, they have to stay. They don't want to, but they gotta. Opening day, uh, Paul's comatose. Um, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't there another per- like? basically it's the night of the, uh, of the opening grand opening uh people coming in and we see basically the accounts that we saw at the beginning of the movie where something is happening but we see it from a better point of view well we see it from a better point of view but kind of not because it's still shaky cam this hell house is a hub basically a gateway to hell essentially yeah andrew tully who was the cult leader from 20 years ago his spirit and the spirit of this house and all of its victims is very much still alive yeah, and it's like an ongoing and a living entity. Hence, why the clown mannequins move and fucking they see apparitions of people, and we just see the chaos ensues. We see uh, Alex at one point getting hung in the attic. We see people getting stabbed. We see what looks like a gateway to hell opening up in the basement, and people in hooded and people these in, hoods, yeah, just people- come out of the wall. And the poor actress is just screaming her head off like. Help me, help me. This is not part of the show. There was a guy who was hired as an actor to be down there specifically to protect her, and he bailed. <laughs> he took off. He and then they're like, oh, the poor guy. He couldn't live with guilt. He killed himself two weeks later. Yeah. And essentially, that is basically the story of Hell House. Is, oh, no. Because uh, the ending bit. I forgot. The big ending bit. Yeah, basically, we're getting all this narrative through Sarah a year later talking to a reporter. Yeah, Sarah is one of the friends who was uh, part of the group. Yeah, and Sarah basically tells them, you guys really should go check out the Abaddon Hotel. Yeah, she's doing this interview for this reporter who's doing this report on the on the Hell House, and she's just kind of like damn near catatonic the entire time she's being interviewed. She's answering, but she's very like thousand yard stare kind of. As yeah. she's, and she says, you you should you should if you really want to get the story for Abaddon, you should go there. Yeah, she's like, I'm gonna go rest now in my uh, room two C, two C, and but she leaves behind uh this group of tape, uh, this bag of tapes. She said, I, these are all tapes from the night of the uh the night that it happened of this massacre, as well as all the footage that led up to it. And she's like, why the fuck do you give? Why didn't you give this to police like a year ago when all this happened? Like what? And yeah. uh, so the porter goes to she, she the Abaddon has since been closed down again, and it's like closed up with you know police tape and it's just run down she's like all right uh yeah let's go bust in we go in they go in and they're looking at all the places inside that they've seen from the footage and then they go upstairs and they see 2c on the door wait a second 2c said that she was going to a room she does she couldn't have meant here is there even stayed in the lab on this whole time what the hell they open up the door she's sitting there I mean, you turn around and run it when you see this, right? Yeah. I mean, you you that's the logical next step. But no, too they late. Into the room, yeah, yeah, too late. You you inside now, and at, you you turn around. Cult members there. Cult members there. Grab, and that was the end. Yeah, yeah. You later. There's later some uh, some footage you see of um, you see footage of of Sarah getting killed the night of the murder. Yeah, or the night of the massacre. So that's when you put it together in your head. Oh, she was dead this whole time. Yeah, she was an apparition just to bring more people to the Abaddon Hotel. And uh, so I did not mind having to retalk about this because I think Hell House um, is definitely now in my top three favorite 
found footage movies. Yeah, it's a top tier found footage movie. This, this is a top tier found footage movie that I agree when I see people on Instagram. I'm glad it's getting traction because people on Insta are yeah. saying it does not get nearly as much love as it deserves, and I agree. Yeah, yeah I've, I found this to be like one of the few found footage movies that has rewatchability. Oh, I've watched it. Go back, back to, yeah. I've watched it like two or three times. Yeah. And, and just freaking myself. Look, movies don't fucking scare me anymore, but I'm looking around the corner of my house looking for these clown mannequins ever yeah. since I watched this movie. I, clowns don't scare me either. But like, like, no clown has ever scared me in a movie. But these fucking mannequin clowns, I'm like looking around the corner. It's like, fuck. Because in my mind, especially when it's dark, they play a piano song throughout the entire, a little me- melody throughout the entirety of this movie. That's yeah. a very haunting tune. And when you hear the song, you know clown mannequins around the corner. Yeah. And I swear, man, I just, ugh, I don't know if you kind of had an idea that I might like this movie or if it was a fluke that you just like, uh, I don't know. But I didn't know. I just know it was like up there for me when it came to found footage. So I was like, well, if you haven't seen this, you got to at least check it out. So this, uh, for me, I'm just going to go down the line. Uh, for me, I'm going to say story or no technicals uh, found footage movies. I usually give about a seven for found footage movies just because it shake, you know, you have a combination of shaky cam. You have to tell the audience why everything is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll give it an extra and a half because there's also, they do play with some shots too, especially with the strobe lights and it's not all just handheld. So I'll give it a seven and a half okay. on a, on a technical level story. Um, story, I'm also going to give a seven and a half. Uh, it's a, it's a fine story, but enjoyment, I'm going to give an eight. It's, it, it's a solid eight for me. It has sevens are about usually where I'd say that the vast lump of movies that we watch yeah. that I get some enjoyability out of is about six and a half to seven. Yeah. So an eight is like, oh yeah, I'm watching this a couple times. Yeah. Okay. So total 23 out of 30. Yeah. And I, I got, I also... Most, I think most of the movies that we really, really like end up falling in the 21 to 23 range. Yeah. Like 20, anything that's above a 23, when you start getting into like your, the menu or mm. for me, the thing, those kind of movies. Like that's, once you get above 25, that's like, you're like classic. super top tier. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah. When, when you go above like 25, I'm usually only watching you once a year just because it's usually that yeah. I don't want to overdo it. But yeah. uh, I think I've gushed about Hell House long enough. As if After I don't the main event. No, as if I don't already know. We I have to assign you homework next time. All right. As if, as if I don't know what you already have to review, you're gonna review Paranorman. And you're gonna review Hell House two. Oh, what a what a shock! I would I I I wonder what, what I'll think of it. Yeah. <laughs> like we didn't already record it. Yes, this is this is so weird because so much has happened since our first recording that it's like, man, I've already seen a couple of these things that we're going to be kind of mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> As you said, from the main event, the Vavitch. Yeah, the witch. Because I wanted to break down the season into different seasons. Like this first month, I, the whole thing was, I want this to be the season of the witch. Hence why I, my first pick was Autopsy of Jane Doe. Yeah. But then I was like, well, you know, I haven't seen The Witch. It's been a long time since I've seen it, so... I've never seen The Witch, and it's from our old pals over there at A24. Which, very much like M. Night Shyamalan, it's a hate and love relationship with them. With A24. And, once more, it's... I said this at the very, very... Our very, very first episode when we were reviewing Fear Street, uh, Part 3, that ye old Puritan era isn't really my era yeah, to period, watch period period pieces are also super hit and miss certain ones just because it's like yeah. the witch and it's like yes we know witches witches if there's if there's a bump crop that means that we're gonna hang a woman or something you know what i mean like yeah it's just because we live in a modern society which is why it's harder for me to watch like it's like watching handmaid's tale I'm like ah, yeah. man it's just uncomfortable yeah what i kind of enjoyed with this movie is they just kept it within one family Yes, that definitely... That's all all we focus on. It's not a whole town going after each other. It's one family. Yes, Yes. so um, if if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and get us started and I'll throw it to you. Because, um, well, first off, a little bit of, you know, background for this. Uh, This was Anya Taylor-Joy's first movie. I did not know that. This came out before Split? This was her very first movie. Yeah. 
I could have swore Split came out before this one. I think I looked up the uh, the wiki and she was like 17 because this came out in 2000. This came out like 10 years ago. She's 27 now, so she would have been like. This came out. Uh, well, it was released at Sundance in 2015, but came out in theaters in 2016. Oh, so it would have been even younger. So yeah, she, that you said 20. You said 2015. Yeah. Wait, so that means she would have been record. Uh, they would have done it when she was uh, 2014 to 15. Yeah. So yeah. So this was her first movie. Split came out the next year. Yeah. Well, they were both released in 2016. So. But go. yeah. So yeah, this is Anya Taylor Joy's first movie, and uh, yeah. I have since you know this movie's been released. Anya Taylor Joy's become one of my uh, favorite in the horror category, or just in terms of actresses in just general. Just favorite. Yeah. If I see her on something, I'm gonna watch it. So. Um. And I'll just go ahead and say um, she was just as good an actress, you know, starting in out. In her first movie, yeah. Like, she, she crushed this role, so. So I'll just go ahead and t- say that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that everybody, including the kids, despite the kid characters, everybody, this movie was acted very well. Yes. Um, especially by the kids, because the kids arguably had more that they had to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was a, and again, we said this was an A24 movie. This is the early years of A24, by yeah, the way. Directed by uh, Robert Eagers. Uh, of Lighthouse fame and this yeah. movie fame. Has but... he done anything else? I know he's doing the uh, new... Nosferatu. Yeah, but what else he, has he done? I think he has like one or two other movies under his belt. Uh, the Northman? Yes. I haven't seen that. I think he has like three three to four movies, but they're like... He has a distinctive style. Okay, yeah, so Nosferatu is going to be his fourth movie. He's... Dr- because all these movies he directed and wrote, so which I which I'm looking forward to, by the way, I'm looking yeah. forward to this because um, it's funny that we're reviewing The Witch because we're also reviewing The Lighthouse next season and or not next season but next month. Yeah. And I've I've mentioned how my feelings on it, but this one, um, well, you know, it, it's it's cool. We're we're talking, we're giving a lot of love to Eggers, basically. Yeah. Is what, what we're doing. Robert Eggers also someone's kind of like a love and hate relationship with his movies. All right, so getting into this movie, the only thing I knew about this is I have heard the term Black Phillip, and I knew Anya Taylor Joy was in. That is all I knew about this movie. And if you don't want it to be entirely spoiled, a Puritan family uh, lives in isolation out in the woods, and then gets plagued with harsh, harsh, and hardships. And they suspect it might be the evil doings of a witch of the wood. Yeah. So getting started <laughs> i'll say this uh our main family i don't think they have a last name or if they did it wasn't mentioned but it's william is the name i believe of the father uh thomason is anya taylor joy and Catherine, i believe is his wife yeah this is the wife and then caleb is his oldest son but a couple years younger than uh thomason Thomas. he's like uh in his he's like pre he's like entering into puberty kid yeah and then there's uh, a pair of twins younger than him, Mercy and Jonas. Yes. And then they have a baby named Sam. Yes. And and this family, they're uh, they leave the this this they leave their colony because of uh, they're asked to leave because they're, they're asked to leave too strict in their religion for Would the sixteen hundreds. You, I was about to say, you know, you gotta be intense if you're getting kicked out by the Puritans for being too religious. Yeah. In sixteen thirty, so this is what like forty years before the witch trials. Yes. Yeah. Um. So they get kicked out, basically, which is weird because you would think in the 1600 period they would have just killed them and said, "Yeah, they were witches." Yeah. <laughs> but they kick they kicked them out, and they basically are living out in the woods by themselves or a patch of land by themselves. But winter is upon them, and they have not been having a good run by themselves. Other corn harvest is not good. And, and then, yeah, yeah. And, and ten minutes into this, we get baby kidnapping it's like 10 minutes in that like 10 minutes into this movie we have seen this family get kicked out set up shop and um and taylor joyce is like playing peekaboo with the baby baby sam yeah and then she go she looks away for like not even like five seconds looks back baby's she's, gone yeah she's doing peekaboo she she, she yeah. like closes her face to do a peekaboo and then does the pick and then baby's just gone it's just like like what it's, she like looks up and there's like no one to, around it's like where where'd the baby go yeah and then we see what happened to the baby and it ain't yeah. good no we we but... see well first off there is no question witches exist in this universe yeah 
Yikes. We see the witch with the baby. Butt ass naked old hag witch. These are your butt yeah. naked hag yeah. witches. Like, um, who she took. Uh, I saw what she. When you see the scene and the way that it's set up, you're like, they're not about to. <laughs> and they go, no, they're about to. And they do it, yeah. Yeah, because you just see this baby sitting, uh, laying up on this altar as, as this, as uh, you see a hand like kind of caressing like the head. And then, then you just see. You, you don't see it happen, but you see this 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 witch bathing in blood. Yeah, I was like, "Damn, that's an intense way to get your movie kicked off." Right. And the family is now, of course, in mourning. They believe that a wolf uh, snatched up the baby when Thomason wasn't looking. Yeah. So ever since this happened, the mother Catherine, she's been just kind of pissed at. Well, yeah. she's been crying, of course. Yeah. Uh, as any mother would, but she blames Thomas and says, you should have been paying attention, that yeah. whole thing. Yeah, and from here, you see this family start to spiral. Like, as things get worse and worse, it's the father saying, this is God, give him this hardship to test our faith. At this but point, really, they're just yeah. being cursed by the witch. At the, the, which I think is a very interesting take on the witch because usually it's the other way around when you tell this story it's like oh all this stuff is happening and it's because we think she's a witch but witches don't exist it's like no in this one witches exist but i will say no i'll I'll, I'll save this thought for later but continue yes they yeah yeah the the father just keeps saying we just need to pray and we pray hard enough things will turn around and then uh the father takes caleb out into the woods where they're not supposed to go to Basically, like, the family don't got food, so they're going to try to hunt for some animal. Yeah, and I guess he's thinking, like, son, like, I know we say not to come out here, but desperate times, I need your help. And, and then the father yeah. kind of confesses all his lies that he's told to his son. And it's like, hey, need you to hold those lies for me. He basically informs him that um, he had, they had to, or his father ended up having to sell his wife's uh, very valuable cup. I guess it was a, yeah. it was a family heirloom, but it was worth a bit of money in because he needed money to buy supplies to really go and stuff like that yeah for, yeah and to buy like uh hunting supplies and um, basically this is like a metaphor of like the father corrupting his son yes and they're hunting all the traps they laid out got sneered but didn't catch anything and then they see a hair and mm-hmm. the father loads the rifle and it blows up in his face yeah i guess i guess uh something went wrong with the flint and sparked yeah. up in his face yeah which is cool they use a hair because in like the 1600s, the hairs were thought to be like have a magical like horror about them and be able to shape Jeff. So, which when they film the rabbit, you can definitely tell that's what they're going for. Cause yeah, uh, there's something about it. Yeah, it's not it's not normal. Yeah. It's not of this world. Yeah. Say. And whilst uh, whilst they're hunting, Thomason is watching Mercy and Jonas and do yeah. basically doing household chores and, uh, and Catherine's then, still yeah. crying. She's like inconsolable. And then they're, you know, they go, Black Phillip kind of breaks out as the father and son come back. And I was like, Thomason, I told you to watch them. This should never happened. Yeah. This mother has it out for Thomason. Yeah. Cause she just, she just blames Thomason for Samuel, the baby dying, even though she, there was nothing she could do. Yeah. She just needs basically someone to blame. Yeah, and then she's like, Tom, get the fuck out of here and go wash your dad's clothes. Yeah, pretty much. Just that, That's why I had to like look back with the way that they kept talking about Thomason. I was like, is this just like a hired hand that they have or something? Because, like, isn't this supposed to be her daughter? Why is she adding, like, her daughter's like a uh, like a hired help hand? You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, but then again, you gotta think about the 1600s. That's kind of how women got treated. Yeah, I, I get that, yeah. but, I, but I was just like, why is she, like, because I was in my mind, I was like, why is she like pissed at her specifically? But like, I get it, it was because of the baby, but yeah, but uh, yeah, so yeah. and then remember that cup I had mentioned earlier that uh, the father had to sell, he yeah. never told his wife, uh, get oh, ooh, excuse me, geez, <laughs> <laughs> guess who, uh, but guess who just now realized, hey, where's my cup? Yeah, they're having a family dinner, praying over dinner, which isn't much, but I was like, Thomas, what, what you do with my cup? She's like, I didn't touch it. She's like, no, you probably lost it while you were washing it. She's like, no, I didn't. She, but she says it like passive aggressively, like, oh, did a wolf come and snack, uh, snatch that away too? Like, yeah. Like, 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 all right, come on, stop being an asshole. I, I get it, but you know what I mean? It, I mean, we understand why yeah. that she, she's being irrational. Yeah. 
And right. after dinner, as the family's laying down, you realize mom's just down with Thomas, and she's like, "You need to take her to town and marry her off to a family." Yeah, they, uh, her, she's yeah. of age now. Yeah, she has her womanhood. Yeah. Uh, for the first signs of her womanhood, as she put. She needs to be married off. It's 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 partly because the mother still blames her, but other partly because they just don't have enough resources to feed everybody. Yeah, the father's been talking about, hey, maybe we could, or no, they've been talking about maybe the colony will come back and let us let us come back but they're like yeah we can't just come back empty-handed and... yeah come back ass baggers yeah at this point i will say this uh or i'll ask you what did you think of the father both as in terms of the acting as well as just a character the acting was phenomenal as a character i felt like he was too stubborn for his own good i kind of i i i will say this yes the father's the the again all the acting everyone's acting their ass off in this movie yeah but the father i liked the layers to him because he obviously is a very pious man yeah very religious very old testament you know i'm that's the only thing my children read is scripture kind of yeah. is kind of father but i don't know you could tell that he also really does care about his family though he's not like yeah. he's not sitting there beating his kids no but you could tell he's very strict yeah. But, and he does have the interest of the family as a whole in mind. Yeah. He, he definitely cares about his family. He's, he's not like beating him as normally a character in the same age to be like portrayed. He's not the insufferable yeah. right hand of God that I thought his character was going to be. Yes. He's not like Miss Carmody from The Mist, which is what I thought we were going to get. Oh, it's stuff in the Bible. No. Like, he shows that. He's not afraid to show his kids that he isn't perfect either. He says, hey, look, I'm filled with sin too. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't change the fact that he's going around basically telling his kids that they're born sinful and everything. But I mean, yeah. he it's, it's his whole testament. I'll just say this. For a person who got kicked out for being too religious for that Puritan colony, he sound, he's probably the most liberal sounding Puritan I've ever seen. <laughs> right. Like, uh... At least in the beginning, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> so... So, yeah, she blames Thomason. They want to send Thomason away, A, because the mom's mad, and B, they don't have enough mouths to feed. Like, they thought the kids were sleeping, but Thomason and Caleb both kind of hear this, and Caleb's like, you know what? I'm a man up for this family. I'm going to go get some animals for a seat. Yes. And at this point, I'd like to just kind of talk about the dynamic of the siblings real quick, because we have yeah. we have had five kids. Yeah. Sam got taken away. We have four. We have Thomason, Mercy, Jonas, and Caleb. Caleb is okay. Caleb and Thomason are obviously, like, the closest. Well, no, the two twins are obviously close, but Thomason and Caleb are close as the older... Yeah, they're uh, the older kids, and they're kind of... They have a bond. And slightly, yeah, slightly different part. Like, Thomason already understands her role and responsibilities in the family. Yes. While Caleb is still learning that, and maybe taking it on more than he should at times. Yes. And then you go down to the two twins who don't really have much uh in roles of like responsibility for the family the two kids are basically there to remind me why i don't like kids yeah um they are basically, basically they're just called uh Tomlinson a witch the entire movie they're calling thomas and a witch and they're basically there as instigators yeah. I, I i say that these kids their purpose of in the movie uh. was to basically stoke the fires that were going yeah because they're calling Thomason a witch, teasing her. They're, they're not helping anybody, pretty much. But they're also kids, bratty little kids. What do you expect? Yeah, and Thomason's like, no, they're probably the witches because they claim to be talking to Black Philip. Yeah, the, the, most, the, the entire time they're like talking and messing with a goat that they call Black Philip. What uh, led me to, uh, I think, right around the center time when a really interesting scene happened, where the father's like, all right, let's all say the Lord's Prayer. And as they start, the twins go, oh, we don't remember it? Well, that's later. Is it? Yeah, that's much later. I thought it was before uh, what happens, Caleb happens. No, that was during the Caleb one. Was it? But as you were saying, uh, Caleb's like, I got to man up and do something for this family because I, yeah. I don't want Thomason to go away. Yeah, and then Thomason's like, hey, I'm going to go with you or I'm going to wake up the parents. Yeah, that's that's the thing. A lot of, There's a lot of complicated layers to these characters. Like, she's yeah. she wants to obviously not be obviously not leave yeah but she doesn't want her brother to get in trouble either so she's like all right i'm coming with you wherever what i don't know what we're doing but we're let's go so they're in the woods 
And then their dog freaks out, which freaks out the horse, which bucks Tomlinson. She's knocked out. Yeah, they were they were going out to the woods to go uh, to get them. Uh, yeah, sh- yeah, they they to check the traps, and uh, yeah, again, they, she, they already got chewed out once because you're not allowed to go out into the woods. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, Thomason gets thrown off and conks her head. Yeah, she's knocked out, and Caleb's just alone in the woods, like just basically aimlessly wandering through, trying to find his way. And you're just sitting there like, shit, how are they gonna how are they gonna blame Thomason on this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tomlinson comes too, and then she sees her dad right there, and they're like, "Where's Caleb?" She's like, "I don't know. I was just knocked out." Yeah, I just got knocked out. Yeah. Uh, they're like, "Why were you even out there?" Like, because she's not saying why they were even out in the woods in the first place. They yeah. they were trying to be back by midday, and like a whole day has passed, and it's like dark now. Yeah, they're like, so now this family lost two sons, their horse, and their dog. Yeah, because the, the cuts of what's happening to Caleb. He turns over, sees that his dog... Not so been, bad. <laughs> oh, no, well, <laughs> yes, his dog his has been bored. Completely, yeah, completely gutted. And he runs, and then he sees us run down shit with a uh, witch in a red robe. Hold hold on, everything. hold on, though. Maybe maybe this ain't so bad. Because yeah. uh, I, I remember writing this particular... Uh, this is something I would like to talk about. Uh, um, being Caleb's, lost, you know, yeah. this might not be so bad. <laughs> yeah, and Caleb's like, you can't tempt me. I'm a god. You can't tempt me. And then she kisses him. And it's important to Caleb. mention. Yeah, yeah. It's important to mention that at this point, Caleb is going through puberty right now. Yeah. And there's been instances where he has looked at his sister, who is I think like 16. She's of age. She's yeah. 16, 17. And like you'll see, she, he's like like her her uh, cleavage might be uh, somewhat exposed, which is actually it's actually exposed, but it's tame for Puritans. Yeah. But obviously he's you know he catches a glance yeah it's his sister but he's also going through puberty yeah and so he's he has no uh, house look yeah yeah so he's obviously so you see this big tittied witch come out in the middle of the woods is exactly what you know he's <laughs> what he's uh, exactly would te- would tempt him yeah exactly what would tempt him now that was the other thing i want to say because she comes up and kisses him right on the mouth which has yeah. got to be a weird day of filming yeah and then these I, two I, bony gray hands come up and grab him by the head yeah, and, and so K- K- Caleb's now not having a great time. Back to the house. Yeah, and they're like, uh, so Caleb's gone. Caleb's gone, and... Uh, so they're, it, they're, like, panicking. They're like, we don't have a horse to get to town. We, we don't have a dog. And she's, uh, and again, she's blaming all of this on Thomas, and, and then that's finally when the father confesses something. Yeah, he's like, listen, I was the one who took your cup. Because that was kind of like the seed that started all this distrust. Well, she, no, yeah. the Sam dying was, but uh, that that cup didn't help things. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, and I was the one that took Caleb into the woods yesterday to set traps. Basically, say like I basically let Thomason, I basically basically let you chew Thomason out for the last couple of days for something that I did. Yeah. Which is like, I was like, yeah, I might have had mixed feelings about you as a dad, but now you saying that out loud, like, yeah, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> you did just let her yeah. take the blame for all this for a little while. And then suddenly it's the mom's demeanor towards someone's and changes for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Once that revelation comes, now she, like, the, they're all, like, together, like, praying for Caleb's safe return. And yeah. and the mother is now, like, loving towards Andy Taylor. They're like, oh, man, it's, it's stop with this fake affection. Like, yeah. you actually... But then they hear a something or no, no, it was when uh, she goes to go put the goats down. Yeah, she's like, Oh, you forgot to put the goats away. And I can wait till morning, but you know, Tomlinson wanting to keep winning her mother's face. She's like, I'll go do it now. Yeah. She goes out there, Caleb's just out cold naked. Butt naked standing out in the rain, which again is one of the reasons why I, well, between this and the next scene, even the kids are acting their ass off in this movie. Yeah. Because the he's out there and they they take him away to the attic. I think it was the attic of the of the cottage. Yeah, and on, yeah, he is pale as a ghost laying there. He's yeah. like out of it, like uh, yeah, speaking yeah, gibberish. Yeah. And just the family is, is praying for them, praying for him. And the mother is now talking about Caleb's. This is witchcraft. This is witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> the kids uh, are obviously still poking and prodding by saying that it's Thomason. Yeah, and Thomas is like, no, they're the ones who talked to Black Phillip. This is when that scene comes up that you were talking about. Yeah, which I thought was pretty clever, because in, like, witch lore, they can't say that prayer without pain. 
So having the twins be like, oh, no, we, we don't remember this prayer. We say every day. Yeah, because Thomas, because because Caleb is like they're praying for his soul here. Yeah, and they're you know like the father has. This is another reason why I seen that made me like the father was that any other yeah. father would the, the what the kids are saying that Thomas sends a witch. Thomas sends a witch yeah. would have immediately like backhanded or burnt his yeah. like daughter. But he's like he talks to his daughter and yeah. he says, "Do you love the Bible? Do you love prayer?" And she's like, "Yes, yes." And he's like, "I've not raised any witch in this house." Yeah. yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, he actually listened to his daughter. Yeah. and then he kind of takes his three remaining kids and locks them in the barn. Well, after Caleb, Caleb has one more. Sp- he's like choking on something yeah. to the point where the dad has to take a knife and pry his son's jaw open because it, it's he's like lock jawed. Yeah, and, and, and he's his son, an apple, a rotten apple core kind of thing, a ro- whole rotten apple. Yeah. And which, you know, from his life the day before saying, oh, we were out there because I thought I saw an apple. I didn't even put that together. Yeah. I, I didn't put that apple uh, thing together because he lied and said that he had at the very beginning when they came out from the forest, he had lied and said, oh, the only reason we were out there is because I thought I saw an apple. Yeah. That it might. Oh, I thought I saw an orchard and we could have had it, you know, for yeah. the family. But he basically was covering for his dad. Yeah. And. So Caleb basically he he blasphemes and then he dies. Yeah. And then the at this point that's two kids down. The kids are calling each other witches. The father takes them and puts them in a barn. Uh, yeah. He's talking about how he'll if he finds out uh, once he gets to the bottom of this he'll kill whoever. This is the Puritan father I was thinking of. <laughs> Where he's like I'm gonna yeah. kill whoever I find as being a witch. Yeah. Really um, everything's going so off the rails now. He's becoming like super into his like. I should probably get my shit together before I die. Now they don't know what to do. The dad is like, let's let's take everybody, let's take Thomason, sell her off, bring back some stuff for the kid. Like he he he's still trying to salvage what's less of this family. She is saying how they're basically fucked because they're yeah. you know, it's under the witch's curse. And because they got locked in the barn, they had a second to cool off. So now yeah. the the sister Thomason and the kids are like, Are you really a witch? No. Are you? No, <laughs> it's like it's uh, just, and, and the dad has has his own little mini confession out by the barn. Yeah, as he's cutting more firewood. Yeah, and he's like, I I did this and I did this to my family. I'm like, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, a little bit. Well, I mean, yeah. not all of it, not all of it, but I mean, a good yeah. some of it. <laughs> they are in the locked in the barn right now, <laughs> <laughs> but um. Next, and then the, a very A24 night happens where a very trippy dream sequence of um, Catherine who hallucinates that she sees her dead son Caleb and Sam uh, and then she goes to she's like hypnotically in a trance right now yeah so basically she gets tempted with being able to see her two dead sons again and goes to nurse Samuel and then yeah. and you come to realize that it's a, uh, and only an A24 way you find out that it's a raven pecking at her breast. Yeah. Which it sounds weird and it is a weird scene, but it makes sense in context when you watch it. Um, yeah. Or maybe not, but it made sense to me when I was watching it. But next morning, William, dad wakes up. He's like, all right. He, this poor man, he wakes up. You know, he's probably like, all right, I have a long day ahead of me yeah. <laughs> of, of, of figuring out what to do. Goes downstairs, goes outside. And this is very much like that scene from Hereditary <laughs> where the mother wakes up in the morning and goes out to the car. <laughs> he just sees the barn a mess. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And were, were the two kids uh, disappeared or were they all bloodied corpses? Uh. I think they disappeared. The two kids are gone, but uh, Anya Taylor Joy has blood on her hands, or is covered in blood. But she's knocked out. She's like she was coming too. Yeah. And the father, it, it, seeing his facial expressions is the funniest thing. Yeah. Just him walking outside, seeing the barn, seeing Anya Taylor Joy, and just let all of the thoughts accumulating in his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then he's uh, attacked by Black Phillip. Yeah, random goat who got out again. Yeah, knocks him down again, and then this time headbutts him into Slitter, which, you know, finishes the job. Yeah, he, they, he like, cracks, he, like, when he, he got him, like, in the ribs and, like, cracked his rim and got his lungs or something when, yeah. he, when he rammed into him. And then the mom, 
It's like, this is all your fault, Tomlinson. Yeah, all she comes out and she sees the her husband dead, the kid's gone, and just a bloodied on, you tell her joy, who she didn't yeah. like in the first place. Yeah, so they get into a struggle where the mom's strangling her. Tomlinson finds a, uh, like, a butcher's cleave. It was a bill hook. Bill hook? Okay. And it was she's... bill or bull hooks. I was called yeah. something like that. So, and she starts chopping at her mom to kill her to get her off. Reluctantly. She didn't want to. Yeah, though. no. It was like a fight or flight reaction type deal. It's either this or get strangled to death. Yeah. And then she's like wore out, falls asleep. Yeah, she wakes up. Out. It's like the uh, beginning of night. Yes, yeah, it's, it's dusk. Yeah. And basically she ends up getting tempted to becoming the witch that her whole family claims she was in the beginning. She goes out to the barn and probably just not even really, really thinking about yeah. it, probably just doing it in passing. She goes up to the black Philip goat, which the twins throughout the entire movie said that they could talk to. Yeah. And she goes, she just, she probably didn't think anything was going to happen, but she said, do you really talk? Yeah. Talk to me like you talk to them. And so, you know, nothing, pause, nothing. she's about to leave. And then the goat says, yeah, I can talk <laughs> pretty much. Uh, He's like, what do you, what, what can I do to tempt you? Or, yeah. What do you want? Do you want to see the world? Do you want a pretty dress? Do you want, uh, basically, what do you yeah. want? I'll give you anything. All you got to yeah. do is write your name down in this ledger. Yeah. She's like, I can't. He's like, I'll help you. And then what follows is scene that shocked me, considering that it was Anya Taylor's Joy's first movie. Yeah. Because the next scene is her walking nude out into the forest where she comes upon a coven of, uh, of nude witches having like a, a ritual uh, by a bonfire. Coven of witches, yeah. And they all start to levitate, and then there's like a like Black Philip turns into a figure behind her. Yeah, it's a dark basically figure. Basically showing that he was the devil the entire time, and she just made a deal with him. So she starts levitating in front of him, basically laughing hysterically at this point, and that's the end of the movie. Yeah, and that's, um, yeah, so that was A24's The Witch. Yeah. Um, just initial thoughts. Um, or well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just go into initial. So what do you think of this movie? I think this is a really good movie. It's very well told and, you know, period pieces usually aren't my thing. Mm-hmm. Slower pace movies usually aren't my thing, but this was a pretty good movie. I would probably say that if it wasn't acted as well as it was, it would probably piss me off. But yeah. the, 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 cause, cause I'm the same way about ye old era, but everybody in this movie was acting so well that I, I, I was like, man, that, and they had layers too. Even the dad, yeah. I was like, yeah, I mean, this guy's kind of liberal for a very Puritan, like too pure for the Puritan's father. Yeah. But he's also not perfect. He might be, yeah, he, he might be preaching scripture, but he's also lying too. But you can yeah. understand why he's lying. He's, he, he was lying because he didn't want to upset his wife and, they're very human yeah. characters. Yeah, very much written like actual people, which was nice. Yeah. For, for and, and like I said, even the kids who usually annoy me, Caleb was acting his ass off. Uh, Anya Taylor was, I guess, she's just always been a good actress. Yeah, and uh, the kids, I'll give a pass to just because that's what their whole point of their existence was to just kind of stoke yeah. the fire a little bit. So yeah, um, is there a scene that stuck out to you? I think it was a. Uh... Basically, the scene where she's like washing her father's clothes, and she has a really nice conversation with Caleb. It's nice to see that relationship, mm-hmm. and then her joking about being the witch to the twins put the seed in her mind that she's actually a witch. But it was—it's also something that an older sister would definitely do. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's what older sisters. I have an older sister. You're damn. Yes. Yeah, you're damn yeah. certain that they'll like fuck with you when when, yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're younger. I'm going to say my scene, my thing that always sticks out to me is uh, Caleb and his whole scene in the uh, attic. Uh, okay, yeah. Because A, having to memorize all that ye old scripture as well, because he's basically quoting scripture and blasphemy and doing all this stuff as he's like convulsing. Yeah. But like he's he he's putting us all in that scene. So, yeah. So uh, that scene, yeah, because little, yeah. little kid was hacking his ass off. He's, I'll put that on par with... Uh, with Exorcist in terms of giving flowers for performances. Oh yeah, he definitely crushed it. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's break this. Let's let's break this thing down. All right. Um. Oh, and I'll yeah. So technicals. What are you gonna give it? I don't always like Robert Eager's movies, but he's always he's a master behind the camera. He's a very good cinematographer. Yeah, he's really good. So I'm gonna give it 
An 8.5. An 8.5? Yeah. That's about what I gave I gave it at 8. Yeah, he, he, um, he's just really good behind the camera. Story, on the other hand, I give an 8.5 to. Story, because I also put that in terms of uh, acting. I put the acting in story. Yeah. And I put, uh, yeah. when you peel back like the layers of it, I, th- I think that's a good eight and a half. It's a good story. Yeah, I, I'm i right there with you. Eight and a half feels story as well. It's just a very well-told story with well-developed characters. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Because I was he expecting... He crushed it with his writing in this movie, yeah. And, which is, I'm very glad that I watched this because, uh, oh, I'll, I'll go into that for enjoyment. Yeah, so enjoyment... This is one of those rare cases where enjoyment's actually less than my uh, less than the story. Like I said, it, this is still a period piece, still a little bit slower. So for enjoyment, I went seven. I put seven and a half. It's still lower than my story. Yeah, because I I gave it seven and a half because I was going to say because it is also in the period that's not my cup of tea. But a seven and a half for me, given that, is actually praise because I still enjoyed it given the time piece. Um, I'm not against time period pieces. It's just that particular era. It's, it's yeah. that particular era in that particular setting. Yeah. Like 1600s in like London is a different thing. You know what I mean? Than 1600s yeah. in the Puritan place. So even though it is a period piece, it still gets a 24 out of 30 from both of us. Yeah. Very good movie. Great movie. Yeah. It's, it's worth at least again, if you're not into period pieces like I am, it's still worth at least a watch just to watch it it won't piss you yeah, off it, it's a good watch like i know i could go back and rewatch this movie mm-hmm. but i don't know if i'll put it in like a yearly rotation maybe once every couple of years i'll go back and rewatch this and uh one thing i wanted to add to these reviews is best watched uh i don't know if i did it in the first one but i want to kind of introduce this like what is the best way to watch this movie for me i caught it at the perfect time it gets dark here about six o'clock it's usually yeah. dark here at six four o'clock the sky was gray, as was the movie. Yeah. So four o'clock on a nice cloudy day is the perfect, uh, for me, is the perfect way to watch this movie. What about you? Yeah, for me, it's like right as it's time, as like, you know, the sun's getting ready to set. Not pitch black yet, but it's getting there. Yeah. Dusk. It was cre- creepy. It was gave it some ambiance. And uh, that's how I watch it, though. All right, so are you ready for some of the rotten reviews? Yes, tell me some of these rotten reviews. All right. Now, I'll, I'm going to guess that because this is A24 and this was the early days of A24, that they might say that it was too weird. So Ryan uh, Cyric from The Reader said, The biggest magic the witch has to offer is making 93 minutes feel like the rest of your natural life. I guess that's a guy who doesn't like slow burn movies. Would you say this is a slow burn movie? There's stuff usually going on in every scene. I like, think it's paced very well. Yeah. But I could see like how it could be uh, I it, it's definitely for a certain if you're yeah. if you're the kind of person who likes horror movies that it's like very upbeat, very fast paced. This isn't that this is a slower paced movie. Yeah, but this movie still gets you hooked in like the first yes. ten minutes. But yeah. there's no but there's never nothing going on. There's yeah. like, you know, so I, I guess maybe not because there's stuff that I would say is slow burn is something that like the big reveals don't happen until later. But this stuff has half stuff happening like it has baby murder at the very yeah. first 10 minutes. You're building up to big reveals. It's not going to be revealed to you the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I, I don't know how you see that in the first 10 minutes and go, yeah, this movie's taking forever. Yeah, I'm bored. A baby just got massacred and turned to a potion, but OK. And then you got CJ Prince from Way Too Indie. Rather than try to establish any tension, Eagers prefers to utilize poor jump scares sporadically between artfully composed shots, all of which amount to little. I don't think there were any jump scares. Yeah, like... The only jump scare I can think about is maybe Black Phillip hitting him in the end, but... Yeah. But, I mean, there wasn't really... This This isn't a jump scare kind of movie. <laughs> Yeah, I thought like there's a lot of tension in this movie. This, these are slower, like building tension movies. This isn't a yeah. this isn't a Friday the Thirteenth remake. Where you know what I mean? It's like all right, Pamela Powell from the Daily Journal. The Witch is an artistically striking film. It's truly a visual work of art. Unfortunately, it just couldn't decide if it was a psychological or a paranormal horror film. Oh, well, it was very much a psychological. Yeah. It wasn't a paranormal film. It was or well, I mean, it had it witches witchcraft. in it. Yeah. I mean, it was it it pretty much stuck to its genre. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
again. But then again, I, what did I say at the very beginning? What does being a critic really mean at the end of the day? Yeah, we're all just gonna have our opinions. And I remember our reviews from like season one, where we probably wanted to just be a certain kind of way with our reviews. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen The Witch yet, sorry that we spoiled it for you, but even with it being spoiled, I'd still highly recommend checking it out. Yeah. Just know, just know that you're going to be in for a slower paced movie, but knowing how A24 is now, you'll probably, well, A24 is getting a little bit more branching out. So, yeah. but, it, they, but it's no more slow paced than like it comes at night. I think it's a little bit faster paced than it comes at night, actually. Yeah. It's faster paced than Hereditary and, uh, and Midsummer, so. So I give it all the props. I'm glad. Yeah. That, I'm kind of glad also that this was our movie to take the place of Autopsy of Jane Doe because they're similar in that it's that they're both witches that were created. Yeah. Not, not oh, you were born a witch. These witches were pretty much created by the circumstances surrounding their. Yeah. S- s- surrounding them. In real life, yeah. So I thought that was pretty. Yeah. That was a nice parallel between them. So I'm, you know, I'm glad that you know we didn't talk about that movie, but I'm glad I got because I got to watch this one. And yeah, I, I, this is the reason why I say we have a love hate relationship with A24 because I like this movie. Yeah. All right. We want to thank you all for listening. Oh, wait a second. What's uh, what was going to be the next uh, episode? Oh, the next episode. As if I don't know, but yeah. they don't. <laughs> it is going to be the House of the Devil. Is that what it's called? House of the Devil by. House- uh, Ty West. Uh, Ty West, who is also another really good director. And this is also uh, that's also one of his first works. So Yeah, this was uh this was your pick. So yeah, my pick. House of the Devil. Alright, awesome. And uh, uh yeah, as you were getting into, wanna thank everybody for kicking off yeah. season six. It's just a weird episode we already did all Yes, this, it's just yeah. uh, yes, it's all very weird. I'm trying to, I'm trying not to give away like like what we talked about in the next episode but at the same yeah. time it's already happened and it's like uh, uh yeah so yeah our next movie review will be house of the devil house of the devil with homework being uh hell house 2 and paranormal paranormal Thanks, thank everyone. you guys for listening have a good weekend everybody see ya hey everybody thanks for listening to body bag podcast be sure to like and subscribe and leave us a comment as to what you'd like to hear us review or any horror movie topics you'd like to hear us rant and rave about. And while you're at it, you can find us on Twitter at Body Bag Pod and on Instagram at Body Bag Podcast. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.